Hey guys, I'm back this week with another real-time recipe for you. If you are new to this format, this is where I make dinner in 15 minutes or less in real time so that you can see just how quick and easy it can be to get dinner on the table. And today I am going to share with you a recipe for when it's just too hot to cook, which is usually in the middle of summer. This is kind of my go-to meal. It's less of a recipe than really an idea. All we're going to do is just lots of cutting, chopping, and assembly. My kind of summer weeknight meal. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is prep our melon. So I have a melon here that I am just going to cut in half, just like this. And these are my favorite kinds of melons, the kinds where you can see right here with this green ribbing. Uh, this is actually a golden kiss melon, but also a Tuscan melon would also be great. So I'm just going to scoop out the seeds and melons are at their height of perfection right now. So you can just see how beautiful the fragrance of this melon is unbelievable. They're so ripe and so beautiful. So we want to take advantage of what's in season. That's the best part about summer, right? Okay, so we're gonna scoop those out. There we go. So I'm just gonna move this to the side. Now that our melons are all seeded and ready to go, we are just gonna cut them in half. Yes. And then we're gonna cut this one. Yeah. And then we're going to cut it again, quarters. There we go. Now, this dinner is enough for like really two to three people, or it would make a great starter too for four or five people. So my husband and I will make this for dinner a lot of the times, and the girls love the melon, so it's easy for them to eat that uh, with the prosciutto. Let's see. But a lot of times, especially in the summer in France, my in-laws will serve melon as a first course, which we don't really do that here in the States. Melon's usually a dessert, but it's great. They'll serve it with just a little salt and pepper, and it's just such a great way to start a meal. All right, now we are going to just remove the rind carefully. <laughs> you don't put your fingers here. Maybe I better set that down. There we go. Like that. See, and then you have this little melon boat. And then we're going to place our little boat on the platter. Like this. Just like that. You usually get about eight or ten boats here. This is also a good one for a brunch because um, the sweet and the savory of the melon and then we're gonna top it with the prosciutto is so good. Sick. Gosh, this melon is like beautiful. Melons are also a great thing to grow if you have a garden going. They do take a lot of space, so I will say that. You just put like a few seeds in the ground and they will take off because they're one of those climbing vines like zucchini or squash, you need a lot of room for them. Okay, let's see, enough here. This is probably the hardest, most time consuming part <laughs> of the recipe, but the recipe is gonna go really quick. Okay, let's see. I better not overdo it. I'm going to save this melon for some breakfast and we'll just go with that. Oh, excuse me. Okay, now the other thing we're gonna do is just go take our prosciutto here and when you get to the store, if you have the choice, I say always go with the imported prosciutto. I think the quality is better than the domestic. It's a little more expensive, but I find you're not usually using that much of it, usually about a quarter of a pound, half a pound, feeds two to four people. See, and then you want them to slice it really thin. See how beautiful that is? Because it's a pretty salty meat, so if you have it thinly sliced, it doesn't end up being as overpowering. And then we are just gonna delicately drape our prosciutto over our melon. See how pretty that is? Okay. I usually we'll put one to two pieces of prosciutto on the melon, just like that. There we go. And then you can also just serve a little prosciutto on the side if you would like as well, because sometimes you want to have a little bit more prosciutto than you have melon. There you go. First course ready to go. So now I'm just going to set this aside. And I'm going to take this other platter here, and this is going to be for our tomato salad. Let's give ourselves some room here. <laughs> okay, we're gonna keep our prosciutto wrapped up. Okay, so see how easy that was? Now the next step is going to be this beautiful tomato salad. And in the summertime, I've got all my tomatoes that are just coming up and ripening, and this is the perfect type of salad to serve with that. So we're gonna start with burrata cheese. Now, if you're not familiar with burrata, it's a type of mozzarella. And these are the kinds that I think are best when they come in this little pouch like this because you know it's really fresh. 
We're gonna unwrap it. And they have these beautiful curds inside. I'm actually gonna show you what that looks like when we're all said and done here. I'll taste it and I'll cut into it and you can see. But see, they come in these little pouches and I'm just going to pop them in the center. See, look how beautiful that is. Like that. And this is where you're getting all the protein. So that's why this is a meal that actually will fill you up because between the prosciutto and the protein of the cheese, you're good. All right. There, let's get rid of my little messy papers here. Okay, now for the beautiful crown and glory, the tomatoes. So one of the reasons why I love to grow multicolored tomatoes is because of this, to have a beautiful salad that is so colorful. So normally I'll do like purple tomatoes like this, like these look like Cherokee purples, just some, you know, basic red tomatoes are always good. And then of course, some yellow tomatoes. So here we get some of these. Now, if you wanna learn more about how to grow your own tomatoes, you can head on over to my garden channel and watch my tutorial all about growing tomatoes. Okay, so let's start maybe with these big meaty purple tomatoes. So we're just gonna slice them like this. Now tomatoes, you don't wanna ever put them in the fridge because it will really start to affect their texture. The best place for a tomato is right on your windowsill or your countertop. Okay, I'm gonna place these all around. Now, here's what I do because, you know, I do like to be decorative, even though it's a quick and easy meal, it doesn't take that much effort. We're going to just get the red and the yellow, get these going, and we are going to alternate our colors. See, that's why this is gonna be so pretty. So we're gonna do red, then we're gonna do yellow. Oh, that's really the purple. Purple, sort of purple. Yellow, red. And then we're just gonna go all the way around here. This. There. And this is just such a great way to use up all of these beautiful tomatoes that are suddenly starting to appear. There, see, look how beautiful. It looks kind of strange because you've got those green seeds in it, but don't let that fool you. There is a ton of flavor in these Cherokee purple tomatoes and they are so delicious. And that's the other thing that's nice about a salad like this is each tomato kind of has a slightly different taste. So it makes a simple salad really interesting. Yeah, let's see, maybe we'll put another one like that. And then you can just kind of fill in where you want. This is probably enough tomatoes. Let's see, put these back. Okay, these tomatoes also make a beautiful, easy tomato sauce if you threw them all in the oven and just roasted them. That's another really easy meal that you can do with homegrown tomatoes. Okay, there we go. All right, so now we are going to just drizzle some of this gorgeous extra virgin olive oil all over our salad. So when you get to the store, you'll see lots of different types of olive oil. And for salads, I always like to use extra virgin olive oil because that's the oil that has all the flavor in it. And that is because it is the first press of the olives. So it's really dark green, it's beautiful, it's delicious, and it's great for a salad that is simple like this because there isn't a lot of other things going on. So you just want the purest, most beautiful olive oil. And then because the tomatoes are pretty, you know, acidic, they sort of create their own juice, I don't put any vinegar on it. You'll see the tomatoes are enough. All right, and then we're gonna take just some of this fleur de sel sea salt. The reason why I like the fleur de sel is because it's salt without being overly salty, if that makes sense. It's a beautiful finishing salt to put on salads or tomatoes like this. And then we're just gonna put a little pepper on that. And then the final step is our gorgeous basil, which this is another video you can head over to the garden channel to learn how to grow your own basil. But I do like to have a combination of colors because I think it's so pretty to use the green basil and the purple basil. And see, this is what you get when you grow your own basil. It can be hard a lot of the times in the grocery store to find purple basil. But when it's just outside in a pot, easy peasy, right? Okay, and then we're just gonna give this a chop like that. I think I need a better knife than I have. I like to keep it kind of rough because I think it just looks prettier that way. There you go. And then we're gonna sprinkle it just on the cheese like that, on the tomatoes. Okay. So now we have our beautiful tomato salad. And let's not forget our gorgeous prosciutto and melon. 
there you have it. Dinner in 15 minutes or less. I love this idea because it's so beautiful. It's so summery. The whole thing is at room temperature. And if you don't want to cook in the hot summer months, this is the go-to meal. All right. Now I did promise I was going to show you um, what the burrata cheese looked like. So let's just dig in and we'll be able to take a look. Let's see. See, when you cut into it, you can see, you see that beautiful, beautiful curds in there? My kids call it the chewing gum cheese because it does sort of <laughs> look like chewing gum. But it's so delicious, it's so good with the tomatoes, I think. I'm gonna just try this. I'm gonna do small bites so that I can talk after. Okay, yum. You see, you take a little tomato with the basil and the cheese down the hatch, right? Mmm. So delicious. So creamy, so fresh, so summery. I hope you guys give this one a try and let me know what you think. And I will see you back here next time for another delicious and easy recipe. Until then, bye. You know I could have been a painter. Mixing some color to your lives. Green.